Hi, and welcome back to the experimental part of Faraday's Law. Uh, up on the screen, I have a trace showing you how the display in capstone will look when we do the experiment. And if we go back to where we were before we, uh, uh, when we talked about the background, uh, we, were, we had this equation right here, and we need to take the derivative of the voltage as a function of time. So the B field in the Helmholtz coil is changing because we're changing the voltage as a function of time. All right, now the voltage is this red trace right here, and what's nice about it, it's triangular, which means it has constant slope. So when you go dvdt, you're just looking for the slope on that triangular wave right there. Now, one full cycle, remember uh, from physics one, one full cycle, you pick a point on the wave, and when you come back to the original spot, that's one period later. So I'm looking right here at the bottom, and if I go up to the top, that's half a period, and then it changes the sign of the slope to negative, and then comes down here. And then in the meantime, you can see that the induced EMF, which is the derivative of the voltage, is a constant. Well, you know, the derivative of a constant of a line is the slope of the line, which is a constant. And you can see how it's flip-flopping flip back and forth. So positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So when you're doing the experiment, you can ask Capstone to give you the value of the minimum, the maximum minimum value, and the maximum positive value, and it'll take a whole bunch of them. Then you can take the absolute value of the neg negative one, add it to the positive one, and then you have a really, really good average uh, for each time you do a trial, okay? So you can use the statistics in Capstone to do that. Okay, so anyway, to calculate the slope of that line, dv VDT. Now I just have delta because remember the slope of a constant line is the same at every point along the line. And so I'm going to go from the bottom down here, this is minus VP, all the way up to the top up there. And you can see it's got a positive slope and it's VP minus a minus VP divided by the period divided by 2. Now if you simplify that you see you get 2 VP up on top and you get a 2 from the bottom that jumps up on top. So you end up with 4 VP VP, and then the inverse of period is frequency. And that's what we set in capstone. We set the frequency, not the period. All right, now if we plug that into the equation, then you can see we got that four out in front. Everything else is the same as before. All right, and the B field's in here too. So it really has uh, a lot of constants you have to plug in. And this is the resistance that you put in the circuit. So if you look right over here, I, uh, if you put a nice 15,000 ohm resistor, 15,000 ohm, in series with the Helmholtz coil, you get a beautiful signal that comes out. And you can see the signal right here on the screen. Okay, and uh, so right there, look, it's as straight as an arrow, going up like that, and from here to here, that's half a period, and then you can see the derivative of that slope, which ends up being related to the, f the um, EMF in the detector coil. Then it changes slope, and you can see that the value for the induced EMF, which is going on during that whole time that this slope is going from VP down to minus VP. By the way, this is called VPeak, which is the maximum, and this is minus VP, which is the minimum, and they're equal and opposite, so it's symmetric about zero. All right, so you can see that right there. We're gonna run it in one second. If you go over on the left over here, so this is hooked up to the Helmholtz coil, and you can set the frequency. I've got the frequency set on 1,000. You go up here and you can change the type of wave. So we're looking at a triangular wave, and it's a five volt signal. For one experiment, you're gonna change the voltage. Um, you can go as high as 15 volts, which means you're going from minus 15 to positive 15. And then when you do the frequency experiment, Experiment. You can change the frequency, uh, you can go down to 100, and then you can go all the way up to like, 
you can go up to like 4,000 easy and um, get a nice uh, graph that changes the frequency and you keep the voltage fixed, okay? And you just turn it on right here. In fact, it's on right now, on and off, so it's on right there. And then when you want to run it, you go down here. Now this is called, os this is an oscilloscope, by the way. All right, so when you go, uh, go on over here for a second. So right here it says scope. So we're not using a graph, we're using scope. So in the scope modes, and then go down, back down to the bottom there. When you go into scope mode, it's a very fast uh, device. So you gotta set it for fast monitor mode because the frequencies are so high. So you use uh, fast monitor mode right here where it's, set, where it's set already, and then you can push click. All right, and I gotta turn it on. And when I turn it on, uh, by the way, if you don't set a trigger, uh, here's what it looks like. So you see it's jumping all around the screen. And so we need to tell the oscilloscope to, to uh, lock in on that frequency. And it's called a trigger. So up here at the top, you push that little button and then it's frozen on the screen. And then to get the statistics, you can put a table in here and then you put right here that you want voltage uh, B and that's your EMF voltage. And then if you also want the original voltage, which because you just put it right here on the screen. But anyway, if you wanted that voltage, that would be right there. And then um, it's still running. Let me turn it off for one second. And then you go up here to statistics and you see it gives you the min and the max down in the bottom. And if you want more SIGIs, you have to go and um, highlight this thing. And actually you gotta go, uh, oh, right up here. You can just go right up here and you can add more SIGIs, okay? So you wanna make sure you got enough SIGIs and then it gives you the min and the max. You add them together, divide by two, and you see how close they are, but still, look, 805 and 829. All right, and then over here, you really don't need this. You just set the voltage, that's your independent variable, and you can just set it over here. All right, so that is how you're going to do the experiment. And you know, it just sits here, you don't really realize what's going on until you see what's going on on the screen. Very low frequency, very low voltage, but there's a lot of things going on in the experiment, even with those little, uh, even with those, with those low currents going through your system. All right, and that is the experiment.